So it's early on a Sunday morning and the problem is, is absolutely pouring. So normally I'd be heading to car boots, but today we're heading to a toy fair instead. This is the first time I've been to this vintage and modern toy fair, so I don't really know what to expect. But there's a couple of things I am going to be looking for going in here. I'm kind of hoping for some vintage Jurassic Park toys, maybe some TMNT, some of the really old school WWF figures, and hopefully something video game related, especially Sonic if possible. But as I said, I have no idea what to expect, so let's find out. As you can see, then, it is absolutely pouring. But I just want to take this chance just to remind you folks, if you do enjoy this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe. As I put new videos out every Saturday live at 5, and I really want you folks along for the ride. Now, let's get toy hunting. This is it then, the 22nd Vintage and Modern Toy Fair in Norwich. So there was a couple of options for entry. First entry was at 9.30, you had to pay £5. The next entry time was 10.30, you had to pay £2.50. After 11.30 it was free, we got there just after 10 and I was quite happy to pay the early bird entry. Fair warning though, if you do go early this place is busy but it is worth getting there early as straight away one of the first stalls I went to was packed with amazing retro figures and just jumping straight in you can see some amazing bits. Right off the bat, I found this complete set of vintage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures. These were £30 for the four, but they did have all their weapons. One thing I like to do at the start of a toy fair is look around all of the stalls first before making my first purchase. I'm a big fan of these Star Wars retro series of figures, but I'm not so much a fan of the cardboard packaging now. I like to have the plastic sleeves so you can kind of see what's inside, such as like these Marvel figures. These figures I normally keep mint in box and I want to be able to display them. So when they're kind of sealed in the cardboard box, which seems to be the way a lot of these figures are going, I'm not, they're not really for me. I think my wife put it perfectly into words there. This place is very overwhelming. There is so much stuff and so many awesome things I have never seen before. It's just like on every store, you just see something amazing. Like I've never seen these X-Files figures and £10 for a mint, well, mint is a little bit bent, but a carded figure is like an absolute steal. I know a lot of people weren't a massive fan of the X-Files movie as such, but these figures are super cool, even if the plastic was a little bit brown. I was actually surprised how big these figures are. Like, they are large figures, but yeah, they were super, super cool. I was very tempted to pick these up. For me, one of the best things about this toy fair was the fact it was retro and modern. So you had such a wide range of stuff. Like, they literally had everything from pops to new figures, vintage figures, plushies. They even had, of course, video games. That's the thing, a lot of these toy fairs still will have video games. Some of these were priced a little bit high, but you know, I'm always looking for people slipping on prices or picking up a bargain. Burnout there on the GameCube, I did have a look at that, but I didn't check and I had that. It's always good to see a copy of Pokemon Heart Gold in the wild. That is an expensive game. That's the thing with some of these Pokemon games now. They are getting super expensive, but it's still cool to see them out in the wild. Here is something I definitely don't see very often though, Atari games complete in the box. This MD500 was really big, I think it had a control of it as well. I just love the artwork of some of these old Atari games. I think they were asking £10 each of these, which is a little bit high in my eyes. I would normally probably pick these up if they were like about a five or something. I was quite tempted to try and do a bundle deal on these, but it was early in the day. It was good to see that the toy fair had some really good security. I had some stormtroopers walking around to make sure everyone was in line. It was nice to see that Lord Vader also was a toy collector himself, was having a peruse of the stalls. But back to the business in hand, there was more video games to go through. And yeah, there was a lot of black label PlayStation games here, which I did have a good look through. I was very distracted by this Saturn game, as I'm seeing Saturn games less and less. And this stall definitely had some really good rarities, such as the Sonic game for the Neo Geo again these are games you do not see very often i was tempted to pick this up because these are the kind of things you want to be picking up the stuff you do not see very often there was loads of big box and black label playstation games these were all super cheap sadly i had most of these games in my collection already but it's really good to see these at a toy fair and they were decent prices so you know if you are looking for video games don't get put off by the fact it's primarily a toy fair 
As I said earlier, it was really overwhelming in here and I nearly missed this one and I'm trying to pick up Dreamcast games as and when I see them, especially if the boxes are in good condition. And this copy of Tomb Raider Revelation was complete, the box was intact yeah, and it was just £5. So for that much, definitely going to pick it up. Speaking of Saturn and Dreamcast, the next door had some really good Saturn games, as well as this Dreamcast gem, which I really need to add into my collection very soon. Crazy Taxi 2. So many people just forget this game existed. Even the fact there's a Crazy Taxi 3 on the Xbox, but for me, the original will always be the best. For me, one of the best modern toy makers is NECA. And their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures are absolutely incredible. These are so lifelike and detailed. I really, really like these. These are definitely a line of figures I definitely want to add into my collection over time. They are pricey, but can you really put a price on this kind of quality? There was so much awesome stuff this Toy Fair, and there was so much of kind of the 90s and 2000s Star Wars stuff. I just think a lot of people don't collect this stuff. It just seems to stay cheap, but let me know in the comments down below. Do you collect like the Episode 1, 2 and 3 Star Wars merchandise? It seems to be something a lot of people are sleeping on. I was quite tempted to pick up this enamel pin badge. You know, I am a fan of pies and I am called Dan, but I did pass on this one. I just don't think he's got quite as good a beard as me. On the next store, they had one of my favourite vintage toy lines of all time. And one I've never actually bought any figures from as of yet. The Ghostbusters toys. These were really, really cool. They had really cool actions. Like their mouths opened up. They just kind of changed into monsters. But... This is a toy line I'm just going to jump into and start collecting right now. The Kenner line of Aliens figures. These were super cool. I always used to see these back in the day when I was shopping for Jurassic Park figures. And this was only a fiver. And these also had really cool actions. I don't really understand why they decided to do an Aliens line of toy figures. But I'm really glad they did. I just think in the early 90s, Kenner could do no wrong. Their action figures were the absolute best figures on the market and they just still stand the test of time today. I just think these figures are super cool, both in the way they kind of move, the look and just the quality of these figures. Like, you know, these are figures that are nearly 30 years old now and they are still going strong and they still look super cool. This store had some really well-priced figures as well. I think a lot of people think just because they're at a toy fair, it's going to be expensive. But £5 each for both of these figures, I think, is an amazing deal. Now, here is some weird retro TMNT stuff. A, like, knitting pattern for this woolly jumper. That thing is horrific. And here we have those coins. And again, most of them are missing here. I am still missing one of these coins. And yeah, I was surprised we were selling this for that much. But there was some really cool stuff here, like... Finally, we found some WWF Hasbro figures and they had a large selection of these. And I, I, just, I just don't know where to start with these. I kind of obviously want to start with the classics, you know, your Hogan's, your Macho Man's, stuff like that. But I just never seem to pull the pin. I don't know why. I can never really get into it. But once again, more alien figures here. Five pounds here for the snake alien. This one isn't quite as exciting. It doesn't really have as an exciting thing as like the bull or the scorpion. But it was definitely a super cool figure nonetheless. This store was absolutely rammed with figures. And it's one of the busiest stores of the entire day. Now this He-Man for four quid, which is a really good deal. I know this is a bit more of a modern Masters of the Universe figure, but it's still really cool. For four pound, I think that's a pretty good deal. But they just had absolutely hundreds and hundreds of figures. These were all in really good condition, all priced really well. And it was nice to see them packaged in the packaging so you could see them nice and clearly. And yeah, there was just a bit of everything. We had Master Universe, Ghostbusters, even some Street Sharks. These weird, like, miniature TMNT figures. I don't really know what they were. And yeah, another alien. It just seemed to be the theme of the day. This time we had the Locust Alien, I think it was. Correct me if I'm wrong. That one kind of slashes at the air. Again, they were pretty cheap. Some of these vintage toy lines are fairly cheap to collect for, which is definitely cool if you're on a budget. Some more loose TMNT figures up next, and these were some of the best conditioned ones I'd seen of the day. They were a little bit pricey, but I think these were some of the, like, the rarer figures, but £15 still isn't too bad. And yeah, there were some really nice ones here, really nicely displayed, really easily labelled, which was good. And yeah, these were in really, really good condition. So I kind of favourite characters here. One of the ones here is definitely possibly the weirdest of the TMNT collections. I have no idea what I did Bebop in this weird kind of uniform. 
As we all know by now, one of my favorite things about hunting is getting stuck in. So I really enjoyed this box of kind of all these random figures. There was like a Yoshi, a Luigi. There was some Batman figures in here. Just a little bit of everything. One thing that was super cool was this kind of plushy Kirby. That was really awesome. These were all super cheap. I think it was just kind of random. So I'm like someone's bigger collection or just kind of random bits. But this is how I like to find stuff. Like look how cool this Joker from the Arkham games is. It was like really cool. There was loads of really nice bits in this box. I I definitely think one of these was a little bit short to be a stormtrooper but it's good to see him keeping a look over the toy fair searching around in his back bit which was a little bit quieter i did manage to find some more video games obviously there's more star wars merchandise i did see this copy of grand theft auto 2 for the playstation 1 it was black label and it was actually fully complete it's getting pretty hard to find this gta game especially with the map and booklet i already have this in a collection otherwise i've been tempted to pick it up but cool to see nonetheless let me know in the comments below if you have ever seen more Funko Pops in one area than this before. They literally had hundreds. They had everything. There was comic book ones, movies, TV shows, literally everything. I try My brother was looking for some pop vinyls and he said to look out for some specific ones. And I said, you're going to have to narrow it down. There was literally hundreds. So many cool ones. But... You know, I'm trying to cut back on my pop collecting, but there were some really good ones here. Some like convention exclusives, just so many cool bits of the collection. If you didn't know, my wife is quite the avid collector of vintage Simpsons stuff. So seeing these plushies as such was quite a cool find. I say plushies because the heads were hard plastic. So after a bit of research and checking the label of these, it seems like they were from the 90s from like Burger King. They were super cool. I don't think these would have been kind of the equivalent of Happy Meal toys. So let me know in the comments down below if you know what these are. Like... I had never seen them before, my wife had never seen them before, they were super cool and she did manage to make a very good deal on these. If you think I'm good at a hustle, trust me, until you've seen my wife negotiate a price, you ain't seen nothing. This next stall had some amazing stuff and the biggest temptation of the day, this Mega CD2 boxed and complete, it was 230 quid, which I think is actually a good deal for a boxed and complete Mega CD. I'm definitely on the lookout for one and I think 2023 is going to be the year I pick one up. This store had loads of video games, I've only barely had any toys, but I did manage to find two toys which I had to pick up, these Castlevania figures. As I said at the start of the video, I wanted to find something video game based and I managed to find these two Castlevania figures. There was only two, sadly I think there's three or four in the set, but for £10 each, I'm definitely going to pick these up to add to the collection. As well as loads of kind of general titles, this store also had some really big hitters. So they had loads of cheap games if you were just trying to add something cheap into the collection. They also had some kind of grail items. I know that term's used all the time, but games like this PSP Final Fantasy game and the Collector's Edition, stuff like this is getting harder to get. And especially the Final Fantasy stuff for the PSP, I think this is stuff that a lot of people haven't picked up. And the PSP, I think, is going to get super expensive to collect for in the near future. So I'm glad I've bought a lot of games for that already. But reaching into the back here, some more Final Fantasy PSP games. I think you know what I'm reaching for, but I do want to check these. They were pretty reasonably priced, but I think they were the Japanese versions. But obviously the heavy hitter here is this Resident Evil controller. This thing is an absolute thing of beauty. I think they were asking £260 for this, but as a Resident Evil fan, this is, this is a grail item for me. There is no two ways about this. I would either want to get this one or the yellow one. I would love to have this in the collection. If you've never seen this thing in person, it is one of the most beautiful items I've ever seen. And yeah, if you're a Resident Evil fan, this is the epitome of Grail items. So I guess the theme of today is Aliens figures. It just seems like that is the main thing I'm going to find today. It was cool to see loads of like magic cards and stuff like that. But hiding amongst these items here was this mint carded aliens figure £17 for this this is a figure from the early 90s from Kenner my favorite toy maker and yeah this thing is just a thing of beauty this is how I like to buy my toys mint on the card and yeah this is absolutely incredible having the Woolworth sticker on there just makes this a must-have for me some people might remove that sticker but that is staying on there because that is one of the places I would have bought toys when I was younger and it just means so much to me this figure definitely had to pick this one up there were so many cool things on here again i just love some of these new figures they're kind of they're too expensive to be toys and they just know that even though they're adults but i love it 
Okay, let me just get this straight. I am a massive fan of the boys, but I have said so many times today how amazing these toys look. But the likeness on these figures is absolutely abysmal. These are like 40 quid figures. I'm not blaming the stall. I am blaming the toy maker. These just look terrible. Like, I thought, oh, maybe it's just a Homelander one. But no, the Starlight one, while not as bad, I just don't think it's a very good likeness. And, you know, if you're paying 40 quid for a figure, you at least want it to look like the thing it's meant to be. Just for comparison, compare them to these NECA TMNT figures. Yes, I know these are based on the amazing Turtles in Time video game, but they just look exactly how they should, and the detail and colours are absolutely perfect. I think these are definitely some of the best figures of all time, and definitely ones I want to buy more of, especially the Turtles in Time one. You know, that's one of the greatest video games of all time, so I want to get the figures for it. One of my biggest regrets in life is when I moved house about seven years ago, I sold all of my Resident Evil 4 figures and now these are getting super pricey. We all have regrets and I think it's one of the things that probably led me into video game collecting so hard. Just trust me, if you ever think about selling anything you own, don't do it. Just become a hoarder, just face it, embrace it. There was loads of Pokemon plushies here and you know, I can admit these are super duper cool. I just can't believe how many of them there was and how many Pokemon cards there was as well. But the main thing we were looking for around this place was video games. There was loads of Mega Drive games. I, I don't think I've ever seen this many Mega Drive games at a convention. Like, it was really, really cool. There's some titles I've never seen before, such as that The Mighty Four. And yeah, just loads and loads of boxed and complete games. The only problem was these work fairly expensive and, you know, I was mainly looking for toys today. And just check out, like, some of these boxed N64 stuff. Like, I was quite tempted by 007 The World Is Not Enough, the game that's nowhere near as good as Gold Knight. Obviously, I have a mint and box version of WrestleMania 2000. And yeah, just loads of loose N64 games. It was super cool to see this many games. There was N64, snares, a little bit of everything. Nothing too like outlandish. It was kind of mainly common titles. And to be fair, a lot of these were about perfect market value. The person who was selling these obviously knew the value of them. But it was just cool to see like this many loose carts. You know, I think it's getting harder and harder to find carts in the wild. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, you may have loads of cart based games in your area but we just don't seem to have that much around here so seeing all of these in one place was super cool i did go through all of these but sadly nothing i really needed for collection so on to the next just everywhere you went there was something cool like check out this tomb raider figure that is super awesome it may be based on the movie but it's still very very cool on the next stand there's even more figures just loads and loads of cool stuff this was very cool and a bit random star wars mouse match you know if you ever try and find a mouse mat these days, it's generally really hard. And if I was going to use a mouse mat, I'd definitely want to use a retro kind of Star Wars one or something cool. Loads of awesome figures on here. There was just something for everyone at this toy convention. It was just absolutely stacked with awesome stuff. There was even like some really, really retro games. Like this next door, check out these board games. They look like, I don't even know what year they are from. They are super, super retro. And yeah, just so much cool stuff. There were some strategy guides here. They were mainly World of Warcraft stuff, which I do already have. They were a little bit pricey, but it's definitely cool to see some strategy guides somewhere we wouldn't really normally expect to see them. This could be the coolest item of the entire toy fair. Check us out. As well. Is it a drone? Yeah. Yeah. All the stuff for your drone. Oh, wow. Propellers, your remote control, your charges, everything else. Okay, the cats would love that, wouldn't they? They would, yeah. And they'd probably destroy that. Yeah. I wouldn't trust myself to fly it. <laughs> no, I don't think I'd want to fly it. It's kind of thing I'd do. It's just in the box, to be honest. Yeah, the box is beautiful. Especially when you put that down, it turns it off. Yeah. Uh. 
That Star Wars drone was super cool and super expensive, but trust me, toy collection doesn't have to be expensive. This next box of like vintage carded figures, most of these were like five to 10 pounds. I think the top one was like 15 pounds. But sometimes if you go with some of these slightly less desirable figures, you can pick up some retro toys at a super cheap price. But the thing is, it's all about digging. These were under a table. And you know, people are normally gonna put their best stock front and center. So it's definitely worth going deep. It's always worth digging through these massive mixed lots of figures. You never know what you're going to find. There's some Biker Mice and Mars stuff in here. This absolutely incredible mint in box Street Shark is like super cool, but just under £100, but very, very cool. But it doesn't have to be really expensive to collect. These figures in here were free for a fiver. There was like Ghostbusters stuff, Terminator 2 figures, some WWF figures, loads of cool stuff. The only problem was I didn't really have a lot of time to dig through these. It was coming to the end of the toy fair, but it just shows vintage toy collecting doesn't have to be expensive. Here we are then, the final stall of the day, and this place was busy the entire day, and I can tell why. The prices on here were absolutely fantastic. Like, check this out. Vintage TMNT figure, £4. All of these were like packaged in clear plastic and they were super cheap and in super good condition. And I think they probably had the best prices of the entire toy fair. Like so many good bits. You just had to dig in though. This store was absolutely stacked. It was very popular. But look, this same figure we found earlier in that questionable uniform, £10 here. It just goes to show when you're at a toy fair, you do have to shop around. Don't just grab the first thing you see. That's the thing. I was here about two hours and it took me that long to get to this final stall. But they had so much good stuff and it was super cheap. Like four pounds of vintage figures, can't go wrong. And so it was then. On the very final stall, I managed to find vintage Kenner Jurassic Park toys. And they were cheap. Three pounds a figure. I started making a stack of these as... They're getting harder to find. I know the human figures aren't quite as desirable as the dinosaur figures, but for a couple of quid each, I am grabbing all of these. I, it was quite late in the day at the toy fair, and I'm surprised a lot of these were still there, but for this price, these are an absolute steal. Like, I couldn't believe it. Like, to be a couple of hours into the toy fair, and these will still be there, but maybe not that many people collect Jurassic Park. These, for me, I remember when I was younger. These, like, die-cast little steel toys, and this is... This is incredible to have these as well. These tops trading cards. I'm an absolute sucker for trading cards and these Jurassic Park ones. There's no way I could leave this behind. Thankfully, I was able to make a really good bundle deal on all of these Jurassic Park items. And that's what it's all about. You just have to try and make a deal. At the end of the day, you got to try and haggle to get the best price. And that's just what I did. This toy fair had been absolutely incredible, and this was like the perfect way for it to end. Just picking up some incredible items from my childhood for a decent price. At the end of the day, that's what toy fairs are all about. There we have it then. That was the 22nd Norwich Vintage and Modern Toy Fair. It might have been my first time, but trust me, it will not be my last time. It is a very busy day. It is hectic. It is chaotic, but I cannot recommend it enough. Bring on the 23rd Retro and Modern Toy Fair in Norwich. Now, back to the games room. Here we are then, back in the games room after the Toy Fair. And it was awesome. I'll definitely be going when it comes back in March next year. It was definitely worth getting there early. Even though it was really crowded, there were some amazing bits to pick up for the collection. Yes, yes, yes. I know it was a Toy Fair, but of course I had to pick up at least one video game. You know, I am a fan. So I couldn't really resist on his copy of Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation for the Dreamcast as this thing is in really, really good condition. And finding good condition Dreamcast games is definitely getting harder. This is boxed and complete, and for £5, couldn't pass it up. I think we can all agree there's not many TV shows based on video games that actually get the video games right. But one show I've been absolutely loving at the moment on Netflix is the Castlevania series. So I had to pick up these two Castlevania figures. So we have possibly my favourite character from the show, Godbrand, as well as Carmilla. And as you can see, these figures are absolutely fantastic. They are super detailed. They have extra heads and hands. And yeah, these are just super cool. I, for £10, I couldn't resist these. I think they were there for quite a while. As you can see, they're very dusty. And yeah, I just want to get the other figures in this series now, as these look super, super cool. Truth be told, this next pickup is mine. My wife picked up this bag of Simpsons plushies as such. What they actually are are collectibles from Burger King 
from 1990. They have soft bodies and these hard heads and the labels on them are kind of accessories for each character. So Lisa has her saxophone and Maggie here has her cuddly toy. These are super cool. I don't really know like the history of these. Like it says on them they're from Burger King from 1990. But other than that, I don't really know a lot about them. Checking some of the eBay sold listings, these do go for quite high. But one thing to be said, my wife is absolutely amazing at haggling. I think she got them down from £40 to just over £20. But yeah, these are really, really cool. Vintage Simpsons merchandise is super awesome. And these are rad. Let's get into some retro toys though. When it comes to retro figures, the first name I always think of is Kenner. That's because in the early 90s, they could do no wrong. They had so many awesome lines. Even if some of these made very little sense, like the first one that always springs to mind is the Aliens line. This was a toy line aimed at children for films that were like 15 to 18 ratings. But I always used to see these when I used to go to Keras and Toys in Norwich, and I always thought they looked super cool. So even though I didn't own them back in the day, they've always kind of stuck in my mind. So when I saw a couple of the figures there, I had to pick them up. First of all, I picked up this Scorpion Alien, and they just look so cool. And the thing is, these also have really cool actions like this one. The kind of spines come forward on its head. This was just £5. It's just the first of three Aliens figures I picked up. Secondly, we have this, the Bull Alien. And yeah, again, this has a really cool action. You squeeze the legs forward and the head shoots out. It's actually a, like paramount to the company. These still work after nearly like 20 or 30 years. And these still look super cool. For me, when it comes to collecting vintage action figures, I love to get them carded and complete. And when I saw this, I knew I had to pick it up. I did manage to haggle it down to £15, but even at the £17 asking fee, this was an absolute bargain. It is this complete carded Aliens O'Malley figure. And this thing is just absolutely beautiful. This is what I mean about Kenner in the early 90s. They just looked so cool. And I just love the fact they always came with these little collectible cards. This is definitely a line of figures I'm definitely looking to expand in my collection in. But of course, when we talk about Kenner, we have to talk about the greatest toy line of all time from my favourite movie of all time, Jurassic Park. I said it in the car at the start of the video, I was hoping to pick up some vintage Jurassic Park figures and that is what we did. At the last stall, I managed to find some. These were super cheap. So first off, we have Trevor Tembo from The Lost World. Sadly, these haven't got any of their accessories, but they're still super cool. These were super cheap. So like here we have... I think this is just a generic Jurassic World kind of worker. That was just £3. It's nice these are all bagged as well. We have Dennis Nedry. Again, it was £3. I was like with his action figure that his like dino damage was the fact his arm could be ripped off. I thought it was super cool. Then we have Ellie Sadler, which was just a £2 figure once again. And finally, we have Robert Muldoon. Yes, of course, these would all come with like accessories and mini dinosaurs, but for a couple of quid each, couldn't pass them up. So I managed to get those Jurassic Park figures in a bundle with all of these Tops trading cards for just £18. A lot of people say that these toy fairs are really overpriced, but for me, a lot of stalls seem to be trying to sell their stock. And just, I love these trading cards so much. Just the artwork on some of these is so good. I have no idea if the entire set is here. I need to go through these, put them into numerical order, but I used to love just collecting trading cards back in the day. But let me know in the comments down below, what was your favourite trading card or stickers to collect back in the day? There we have it then, that was the 22nd Retro and Modern Toy Fair in Norwich. The 23rd Retro and Modern Toy Fair is coming in March and I would definitely be going along. I would be tempted to go at the opening time, even though it's £5 entry and might be quite busy, I think there's still going to be some deals to have. But if you're a retro or modern toy collector, I definitely recommend going and checking it out. But let me know in the comments down below, what other good toy fairs are there in your area or around the country? I really want to travel a lot more next year, really build my vintage toy collection, so I really need your folks' help. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and as always, keep playing the game. See you soon.